Hello everyone, Tamara Dilks, Stampin' Up! Demonstrator here on the Gold Coast in Australia. I am back. I've had a few months off and um, it wasn't by choice really. I haven't been well and um, my friend Megan decided, no, nah, I'm not putting up with this and was coming around early in the morning, getting me up and saying, you've got a gym membership, you're going to use it, get out of bed, let's go. So she helped me get back on track. Um, it started off with a very bad bout of, um, uh, of COVID. And although being uh, fully vaccinated, um, it near killed me and I am not exaggerating. I could not breathe. I felt like I had a, um, uh, a lead plate on my chest and I was gasping for air. It just was not very good. So, um, straight after that, um, I seemed to get a, um, a flare up of fibromyalgia and, those of you who who do suffer with fibromyalgia you will understand that um it um it's bad all the time you always feel the effects of fibro but when you have a flare up it's like tenfold and um the pain the insomnia the um digestive issues um the chemical um, intolerances and things like that were just too much for me to bear, um, total fatigue and, um, a lovely Stampin' Up! demonstrator that, um, you might know she's on YouTube and she was actually my inspiration for, um, uh, starting up YouTube um, she put up a post on one of our demonstrator sites and said, if I can do it, you can do it. And I went, okay, I'll give it a go. That's where I started. My first couple of, um, videos were an absolute disaster. They probably still are. I don't know. And, um, so she reached out and said, haven't heard from you for a while. How are you doing? And I said, I'm not doing real well and gave her a lowdown of the story of my fibro. And she sent me this card, which... I absolutely love this card and it's just a um, sending sunshine to brighten your day and she's got a little bit of a um, I hope you're feeling better and um, and that and coming from someone who I admire so much it just meant so much to me and um, you know every, every little bit bit like this helps you get better and helps you feel better and gives you um, some sort of encouragement to get back into things. So today I'm back and I'm almost all the way through um, my nine part series. So I've only got um, part eight and part nine to go. I had recorded part eight a few months ago, but I went to um, upload it and there was only half a video there. So I don't know if I did it in two sections or I only did one section and then the battery went flat. Who knows? But anyway, um, this card came from Jill Lancet. She's an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Greystains, Sydney, Australia. So if you haven't had a look at her videos, please go and check her out. She is an awesome person. Every time I watch one of her videos, I have a little chuckle because she just seems so much like me. Um, <laughs> so some of the things that she says, I go, yep, that sounds like something I would say. And then not only this beautiful card, she also sent me this gorgeous card um, for my birthday. So thank you very much, Jill. Thank you so much for um, making me feel better. And um, I look forward to watching more of your videos. Anyway, part eight of my nine part series of the Fresh as a Daisy designer series um, paper feature sheet. We're going to start off with a tentfold card. So this is Wild Wheat. 
and it's half of an A4 sheet cut lengthwise at 10.5 and then uh, scored and folded in the middle at 14.8. And um, if you're in the US, this is a really easy card just to convert over to your um, US measurements. We use a slightly narrower and longer card, I think. Um, and, but yes, because of what I'm using here, it is so easy just to convert yourself. It doesn't need much of a, um, explanation in it, but in Australia, we use, um, metric measurements. So here we have our card base and we're going to put on, I've pre-cut this mat at, um, 10 by 14.4 and we're just going to adhere that to the front of this card. So I'll do that with my Tombow. You can use any, um, any adhesive you like, whether you like a, a tape runner or liquid glue. I do prefer liquid glue because I tend to have a little bit more wiggle room with it. Um, but Everyone has their own preference and it's totally up to you. There's no right or wrong with this. Okay, now that that's adhered, the um, card that I'd originally made was a little bit different than this. So um, this I'm going to adjust a little bit. And I've got this bit of vellum here that I have cut out of the second largest die of the scalloped contours. So I'm just going to adhere that down because I've got a panel in front of it. Um, I don't really have to be so fussy about the glue. So I'm just going to put a little bit on the back knowing that I'm going to be covering this up anyway. So I'm just going to pop that on an angle, make sure I've got my card folded the right way, which I have, which is awesome. And just pop that down there. And then what's going to go on top of this? I have this piece of the designer series paper um, that I've probably cut down a little bit. It may, I don't know, I can't remember. I cut this ages ago. But the DSP is 10.2 by 6.8 centimetres. And what I'm going to do, originally I had used the uh, Cheerful Daisies um, stamp set. I'm going to use this image here, this one for the centre, the stem. And I have actually lost my leaf. Um, I think Sadie the cleaning lady vacuumed it up accidentally and that's happened to two of my stamps so far so um, that's not good. So what I will be using is I've uh, just got out the petal park and a lot of the stamp sets have leaves um, but I'm just going to use this one but you could use a combination of these just mask up those um, bits it's totally up to you, you know, but I would be using this one, which I did in my original card. Um, but today we're going to do that. Now, what I'm going to do is actually um, get a piece of scrap paper. Because I'm going to heat emboss this. And I'm going to heat emboss it with gold. And while I'm at it, I'm going to do the um, sentiment on this strip, which is actually a die cut from the Cheerful Daisies. It's this little um, banner here. Um, I'm going to do the uh, wishing you the brightest birthday. And I need to emboss that as well. So while I'm here, I'll actually do that. And so I'll need my Versamark, my embossing buddy. Just make sure that the um, the powder gets onto this so that the um, embossing powder does not stick. 
Originally, I did this in black, but I think I might use gold just to step it up just a little bit. And this is my first image I'm going to pop down. Okay, now what I did is I just stamped off a little bit with this image just to give it a little bit more interest. I just hold that down for the for a little while for the Versamark to soak into the paper a bit. And I can't see where that's actually stamped. So what I'm going to do before I start, I'll just clean off my stamp. I'm going to put the embossing powder on this so I know where it is. And just tap that off that's awesome now I actually don't need to emboss that just yet I can go in with my um, my stem we'll pop that on with Versamark And I can also do the centre. Okay. I hope that stays down. Nope, it's not going to. Let's get this on the block. Okay, now I'll just pop that in. And once again, I can emboss those. And I can also, here's my sentiment. And I'll grab that leaf from the Petal Park set. Okay, so we'll pop this in up here. That one's ready to go. Make sure I've got the right side. Ink up my sentiment. And pop this in the centre. I hope my head doesn't get in the way. And hopefully this is straight. might be a little bit to the left but you know it's handmade not hallmark oops and this hasn't worked very well at all oh goodness me i am really making a mess now all right just pop all of my powder embossing powder back in here and yes, I have to make a mess, don't I? Now let's have a look. I might need to recut one of these because I really don't think this is going to work well. Um, for some reason, um, my embossing buddy didn't work. And to get a brush in there, I mean, I can do that, but there's just a lot of smudging everywhere. And if I, and we'll see if it works now. I don't think it will. No, it's just getting worse. So what I'm going to do is just um, die cut another one of those. Um, 
I'd rather do all of my heat embossing all at the same time. So I'll just pop that one aside so I don't spill this. I'll put my lid on so I don't put my elbow in that. I'll put my lid on my Versamark as well. Grab out my little mini. Now, I haven't named my mini yet, so if you think I should be naming my little mini, you can sort of let me know what you think I should call it. That might be a little bit of fun for everyone. Okay, now I need some very vanilla. Here's just a scrap sheet I've got. And I need a little slither. And this is the very vanilla thick that I'm using. And lucky I kept my dies out. And I'm just going to run this through my mini stamp and cut and emboss. die back so I don't lose anything like I lost my stamps actually I think the cats jumped up on top of the table and knocked it down well I'll blame them anyway but <laughs> I am pretty sure that's what happened because they get into mischief sometimes most of the time okay let's try this again I would drop it so just in case I wiped all that off I'll redo that okay have it the right way around and excuse my head I'm going to try and line this up properly Okay, now which side is that on? Ah, this side. Okay, now let's see if this worked out a bit better. much better this time I did just have my brush here I haven't gone anywhere so I know it has to be out here somewhere oh goodness me where are you oh well here's another brush this one just get that little bit off there. Put my powder away. Okay, now we can heat emboss all of this. Just make sure I tidy it up to because once that powder does set, it will be very noticeable. If you've got any little bits laying down, and oh my goodness, I just put my tweezers on top of that. And that was not a good thing to do, was it? Oh, and I just did it to that one too. Oh, madness. Not having much luck. All right, so I'll just pop this back on both of them. Oh, 
It's better. There we go. Okay, now it's time to heat and boss. Just warm this up a bit. Oh, yes, I'm glad I did the gold. That looks awesome. sentiment don't you just love watching the embossing take effect okay so that's that bit done Okay, so what I've decided to do with this piece as well is I've got some colours here and thought I might colour this in. Um, I've got Wild Wheat Light and Dark and I've also got Dark Lemon Lolly. Um, now, I didn't get anything for the leaf, so maybe I should probably get... Um, Pretty Peacock, oh, they did it come in that. It didn't come in Pretty Peacock, did it? Um, I just might use dark shaded spruce just to give a little bit to the, the leaf. So I might do that first. Just give that a bit of color. Might get a tissue as well. try and wipe any excess off the um, embossing okay so now with the wild wheat I'll start with the darker and I'm using the felt tip not the fine side and I'm just going to use that in the center of the petals so that it looks like I've got the darker on the inside for some shading. Okay. Oops. Then I'll go to the Wild Wheat Light with the felt tip side again. And I'm sort of going over that dark bit a little bit. Uh, that just helps with blending. Right on the ends, we will use the, what was it, lemon lolly? Yes, the darker lemon lolly.
and coloring in is just so relaxing. Done. There we go. That's lovely. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just glue that to the front of my card, probably a bit straighter. And Okay, pop those out of the way. Now I have a banner. I do have a banner that I've cut. Here we go. The mat for the little banner is um, 10 centimeters wide. So it will go across here. I wanted to have that card uh, stepping out of the bottom so I don't want it like that it sort of looks like a hat or something like that so I'll just move it up a little bit so it's uh, 10 centimeters wide by 3 point oh well 10 centimeters long by 3.5 3.4 wide and then this is the DSP on one of my other um, sections that I did I had a little bit left over this is just the little bit left over at 2.8 centimeters and it's 10 centimeters wide so I'm just going to pop that on there glue, adhere that down to there Just like this, just so it gives a little bit of an even border around the side of that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Stampin' Dimensionals. I could, uh, I might use, I was going to use the strips, but then I might use these because I want to tuck some stuff in behind here. So, um, I want some gaps. And I'll just stick two more in the center. And I'm just going to pop this on leaving that little tiny border down the bottom there we go and with our sentiment here come on I'm actually going to pop this one up as well And that can go in the center of this little banner. There we go. Now, I 
have a little piece of wild wheat um, ribbon that was left over from another project and I didn't want to waste it. You don't have to do this, but I, I think it's kind of fun. So I'm just going to use my little mini dots and I'm just going to fold it over on itself so it looks a bit like a little tail or whatever you call it. And I am going to get another glue dot and probably stick this under here somewhere, wherever I can. There we go. Now what I've also done is I have die cut some of the foliage out of the Cheerful Daisies. I've used, let's pop this out, this little foliage here and I've die cut. This is all attached but I just put a little piece of cardstock in the wild wheat over top of that, ran that through and then I ended up with these leaves. Now when you do the leaves you also end up with the inserts out of there and I thought waste not what not I'm going to use them. Okay just cleaning up after myself and I'm just going oh, better pop that back in I'm just going to use these and um, just to put a tiny little bit of glue here and there. And I might pop this out to the side. Whoops. Grab my large foliage. Once again, just a couple of little dots here and there because you don't really need a lot of glue. I'm going to tuck it under, have that hang out there. can go over the um, little bit of ribbon if you want. And then these two little bits. Make sure I've got the right edge. A bit too much glue there. I might put under here. Pop it under that leaf. That looks good. And then the other little bit I could pop under here. Yes, actually, I think I like that. I think I wiped all that glue off. Okay, now I have some of the 2023-2025 in colour dots and I'm going to use the Wild Wheat and just put a couple here and there. I think I'll put one there. It's got three different sizes. So I'll put a couple down here. I might put a couple of small ones up there as well. small ones there so there we go that's the outside of the card now I like to dress the inside of my card up so what I've done for the inside I have once again gone back to the scalloped contours and I've used the large scallop in pretty peacock 
and I'll adhere that down there. Um, this fits much better inside the smaller and wider um, US measurements, imperial measurements, but you know, I'm just going to center it in there. And then on top of that, I've got a piece of very vanilla, which is 11.5 lengthwise and 8.2 wide. And I'm just going to adhere that onto the inside and that will be the end of our card. Once again, my Tombow liquid glue. Centering as best I can onto here. Doesn't matter if it's perfect because, you know, it's a handmade card. And then adhere this one to the inside of our card. like so and this is the end of our card so that was part eight of our um of my series i think that's lovely and that's the inside of the card So now all I have to do is upload my part nine, which is going to be a doozy of a card, but honestly, I think it's my favorite. Um, definitely have to try and pre-cut everything because it, it would just take too long to do otherwise. It's really easy. It's just a bit time consuming. So until then, uh, I'll see you later. Bye.